pride parade makes them look bad. Okay? Not the word sodomite. Amen? And they sued. They said, we want that taken out. And the, and the judges ruled. Can't do it. It's not your Bible. It belongs to the king. It belongs to the crowd. And so, during the 1800s, the king thought, you know, let's, let's kind of update the language a little bit. Okay? So, they got Westcott and Hort involved. Westcott and Hort didn't want to just update the language. They found Tischendorf's discarded manuscript. And they knew about the Sinaiticus manuscript and the other manuscripts. And they said, we're going to put it out that these are better manuscripts. So we're not just going to rewrite the King James. We're going to change it completely. We're going to alter it. And the result was the revised version of the Bible. They couldn't call it the King James. They couldn't call it the authorized version. Because it went beyond the bounds that the king had laid. And so they came out with the revised version of the Bible. This is the Bible. That when it came out, all of a sudden it didn't say, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. It comes out and says, Behold, a young woman shall give birth. Already it's a big, it's a subtle difference, but it's a big one. Amen? It's a big one. So th that's what started all of this stuff. Okay? They favored the critical manuscripts over the majority text. Now, here's the thing the Bible warns about Westcott and Hort. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. Westcott and Hort did not have the Holy Spirit of God leading them to produce a good translation of the Bible. They had familiar spirits whispering into their ear, telling them what to do. Say, take this, take prayer and fasting out. Leviticus 20, verse 6, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Now that is pretty harsh language coming from God. You better, you better figure it out what spirit you're following after. Amen? And if this, the spirit that breathes when you read this book, you got the right one. Amen? But these other Bibles have as their source the influence of devils. I wouldn't trust it. I would not trust it with my salvation. Can I hear you say amen? New Bibles such as the Revised Version, New American Standard, New International Version, the TNIV. And basically, the TNIV is the gender-neutral Bible. God is it, or the one, or you. Sound, sounds like a lot of uh, contemporary praise and worship songs. Well, they don't say God, they say you. They praise you. They don't praise God. Okay? All other English and international translations came out of the influence of familiar spirits, but not the direction of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 11, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For he that cometh preacheth what? Another Jesus. You mean the Jesus that is a son of the gods? You mean a Jesus that is fallen from heaven, the morning star? That's another Jesus, isn't it? Uh, or, or you receive another spirit? You mean like a familiar one? Uh, or uh, another gospel? Which says... Which the New International Version says, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's another gospel. Because the real Bible says how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of heaven. You might, uh, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For Satan himself has transformed him to an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his, his ministers... I want you to look at this. There is God's apostles, Paul, Peter, James. We, we trust those men. There are false apostles. Okay? Um, there is Christ, and then there is, there is Christ who is light. He's the light of the world. There is Satan who transforms himself into an angel of light. And then there are God's ministers, and then there are his ministers. And they're not the same. 
uh, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And so, the, do we believe God or men? So, the Bible says, thy word is very pure. Do you believe that? Okay? But then we have, uh, the NIV committee says there are mistakes in the transmission of texts. So, who do you believe? Uh, the Bible says the word of the Lord endures forever. That's what God said. Uh, Ronald Youngblood of the NIV committee says the, word is, the Bible is the words of men and a literary production. Who do you believe? Every word of God is pure. Proverbs chapter 30. That's what God said. J.B. Phillips, who was also an occultist, listening to familiar spirits, said, I felt bound to abandon the God dictated every word from cover to cover attitude. He didn't believe the verbal inspiration of the scriptures. But then he translated the Bible. But he didn't believe it. God said the words of the Lord are pure words. God said we have also a more sure word of prophecy. The New English Bible Committee says every member of the panel was conscious that some of its decisions were in no sense certain. In other words, we don't think we got it all right. I wouldn't read it then. Okay? Till heaven and pass, till, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That is what God said. I get, um, I don't know, I get railed on. Uh, we get persecuted. We haven't really faced persecution yet, but I think it could be coming. From people who do not like our stand on the Bible. And, I, and I'm, I'll tell you what, according to this, I'm standing in the exact same place that even some Presbyterians were standing back in 1851. I'm not moving. I haven't moved. They're the ones that have moved away. Amen? Because I still believe that the Bible has been uncorrupted by the hands of sinful men. Amen? That's what I believe. Okay? And I get that from the Scriptures. Calvin Linton of the NIV says the Bible is God's message and not His words. He believes the Bible is the wrong side of a beautiful embroidery. The picture is still there, but nodded, blurry, not beautiful, not perfect. He calls Christians amusingly uninformed, who presume the Holy Spirit dictated the actual words of the text of the original writers. That man obviously did not read Jeremiah. Jeremiah, open your mouth, and I will take my words and put them in your mouth. He obviously doesn't believe the Bible. Uh... You know, that's, I've taught this before, and that's not what I wanted to get to. Um, I'm thinking I have something at the end of this here. In fact, I know I do. Um, here we go. Let me deal with this. And then, um, then we'll take a little break and we'll come back for one more thing this afternoon. And then I'll let you guys go. Um, I was told at the denominational meeting that by the esteemed uh, Greek professor of the Free Will Baptist, who said, if you say you believe only the King James Bible, he asked the question, Arlene, he said, which version of the King James Bible do you believe? And at the time, I was way backward on all this thing, and I went, yeah. Which one? And I sat in that meeting, Gary, and I saw guys stand up with tears running down their face saying, we love this Bible. We're not preaching anything else. This was the Bible that we started out on. This is the Bible that our free will Baptist forefathers believed and preached and prayed over and worked. This is where they got their doctrine from. We're not. And they were tears in their eyes. And I was just sitting there going, hey, come on. Now, I'm the one with tears in my eyes, saying, I'm not walking away anymore from this. I'm not doing it. So he asked the question, he said, which King James Bible do you believe in? You can't believe in the 1611 because, is it, or do you believe, do you believe in the 1611 or do you believe in the 16 whatever version or do you believe in the 1729 version or whatever? And he started laying off all these different revisions that made it sound like 
the Bible we have now that we call the King James is not the same King James Bible that was came out in 1611. And I went, yeah, turkeys. Okay. Boy, I was, I mean, I hated those guys. I hated those King James Bible guys. I understand the hate. They hate us. And I'm not making that up. When they get in their circles and they talk about the king, you ought to read the websites. You ought to go to the pastor's talk chat websites where the pastors get in there and talk about how when they go to a new church, how they get them out of that King James Bible. You ought to read those things. They hate you people. They do. That is sad. Okay? But then, I started doing a little, little research. And um, we were at a conference for Southwest Radio several years ago, and my wife saw a reprint of the original 1611 King James Bible. And I saw it, and I said, oh man, I'd love to have that. Well, she bought it behind my back and gave it to me for a gift. And I went, I love you. That was really sweet. And you know what I started doing? I thought, you know, I'd always heard that it's different. So I started reading. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And I went, that looks the same to me. I even had a young, had a college student who was, I mean, he was full of his business. He said, that's 1611. He said, uh-uh, you ain't giving that to me. He said, that was written in Middle English. I said, are you kidding me? He said, it was. I said, no, it wasn't. I said, it was written in the same English. And I can read it to you right now and you can understand every word that I'm reading. How many of you understood all that? It's the same thing. Okay, so here's what here's what here's what the committee on English translations, okay, of the American Bible Society said in 1851. Listen to what they said. First thing they said on page seven: the English Bible, as left by the translators, has come down to us unaltered in respect to its text. Unaltered. Okay. Now here's what they say: except. In the changes of orthography, which in the whole English language has undergone to which the version has naturally and properly been conformed. You know what they were talking about? Uh, capitalization, things like that. Um, and accepting also the slight variations and discrepancies which in so long an interval must necessarily rise by reason of human imperfection in the preparation and printing of so many millions of copies. And let me read something from page 11 here that is very, very interesting. It says this, okay? Um, uh, I can't find it now. Anyway, they, they, they document in here that there were three sequences of corrections that they made from the original 1611. The original 1611 Bible was printed with a Gothic sort of Germanic typeface. Okay? I actually have a, uh, have a picture of it up here. Okay? Now that is difficult, but it is possible to read it. Okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay? So in 1612, they changed it to the Roman typeface that you and I are used to reading now. When you get on a computer and you're going to write something in Word, it's Times New Roman. It's a Roman typeface that we are used to reading. So that was one of the first changes they made. In fact, I, have, I do have it up here. Um, typography in Gothic to Roman, 1629 to 1638. Correction of typographical errors and updating of capitalization and spelling. Typographical errors. And they actually document the typographical errors in this book, in this thing here, that they made. Uh, let me give an example. In 1611 Bible, in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 14, it says, Ye shall not eat, but that should be say, that should say, ye shall eat. Now, isn't it easy for us to see how a person laying in tight